Good morning. Today we're talking from Second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 8. And I would like to just explain the grace of God in the light of God fulfilling what He has dreamt for us from before the world began. It says here in Second Timothy 1 verse 8, Be not you therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be a partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us. Now listen to this. He says, this gospel and the power of the gospel is about this, that he saved us and he called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to, our own pur according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. It says here that he has called us according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ before the world began. Now, what that simply means is that before the world began, God has decided that in Christ Jesus, He will have His purpose accomplished in our lives by His grace. So, what is the grace of God? The grace of God is the power by which God accomplishes His purpose in our lives. Now, when we go and look at what this purpose is, we stand astonished when we read verse 10. It says, but it is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. So what he's saying here is that uh, through Jesus Christ, life and immortality is now being brought to light through the gospel, and the gospel is therefore the resurrection of Jesus. Now, let us take this just line upon line. He says in verse 9 that he has called us not according to our works, but in accordance to his own purpose and his own grace. That is how he has called us. In other words, he has purposed something and that it would be by his grace. What is this purpose and what is this grace? It says this purpose and this grace has been made manifest now. In other words, it has appeared by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who then abolished death and he has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. So the purpose that God had was to bring life and immortality to light or to bring it into manifestation. And it says here now that this has been brought into manifestation by Jesus being raised from the dead, wherein death has been abolished and life and immortality has entered into this world. The grace, the grace that he's given us is that by Jesus we have now access to this life, not by our own works, not by the ancient Judaism and the, uh, the rules and laws by which we were righteous or by which the Jews were righteous according to the law. Now listen to verse 11. It says, Unto this I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher to the Gentiles. So Paul simply says that he's a, an apostle to preach what is called the purpose of God that's established by the grace of God, which is defined as Jesus abolishing death and bringing life and immortality to light through the resurrection of Jesus. Uh, this is what God has always dreamt. So when we look at the grace of God, we simply look at the power of God by which he abolishes death and bring life into this world. Now, with that said, I would like to read some passages in the scriptures. It says in 1 Corinthians, uh, chapter 1 and verse 3, it says, Grace unto you and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. What does that then mean in the light of understanding grace as the power of God by which Jesus abolishes death and bring life and immortality into this world? We can read it this way. The power by which God brings forth his original dream, life and immortality, into this world and peace therefore resting in what he brings as well as a harmony between Jew and Gentile from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. When he says God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, we're immediately thinking of John 17 where Jesus said, Father you have given me authority over all flesh so that I could give them eternal life. 
Uh, therefore, I ask you to glorify me because if they can know you and they can know the glorified Jesus, the manifestation of life and immortality or bringing life and immortality to light through the fact that Jesus was raised from the dead, then these people can start to experience the power by which you abolish death in their lives and give life unto them. So what Paul was saying and what he was wrapping up in a simple verse like 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3, when he says, grace unto you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, is to simply say that Jesus was raised from the dead. The glorification of life is now and has now entered into this world and the power by which God fulfills the dream and the purpose that he had before the world began which is to bring forth a people that is exactly like him, is now to each one of you. And we can rest in that. I want to end off with the following. When God makes us a promise, the purpose of that promise is to put you at a place of rest. The effect that a promise has on a person's heart should it be promised by a faithful person that is able to do what he promises the effect of that is rest in the heart of the one unto whom the promise is made now God has made the promise of eternal life to us and everything that uh, is incorporated into that definition which would be the fruit of the spirit which would be a, a inner rest in the heart which would be the flesh being satisfied knowing that it has life and eternal life because we see the flesh of Jesus or the body of Jesus raised from the dead, knowing that we have life. That rest is in the promise. And when God promised eternal life, we find that what he has promised, he started to do in raising Jesus from the dead. And now the power that raised Christ from the dead is called grace. And now, we can have grace wherein God promises that what is done in Jesus, through Jesus, He's doing in us. What does that give us? It gives us true rest. It gives us true rest. I want you to know that God loves you and that the power that comes from God, the power that is from heaven towards us, is not a power that is seated in your own ability to try and jump through hoops. It is the power of God that brings forth His life in you. And it is by Him bring it forth in you. All that we can do is simply believe and rest upon Him. As a last thought, I say this. As we look at the world and things around us might look as if it is crumbling, as if the systems of this world is falling apart. Well, that is what God said will happen to the world system. And we are saved from this world, although we will remain in this world forever. Even if we die in this world, we'll be raised from the dead. And we, as well as the world, will be glorified with the glory of Jesus. But as we look at what is going on in the world, no, it is not unto you. It is what's happening in the world. You are under the rule of life. You are under the promise of God. And although things in this world might fall apart, we live in the peace of the promise of God, which is fulfilled by the grace of God. Amen and amen. Thank you that I could serve you with this message today. I trust that it is food for thought and plants a seed of grace in your heart from where you experience the peace of God. Amen.